In my day job, I've been designing primarily medical equipment for about 30 years. We put the first insulin pumps on diabetics. We got patients home on home dialysis equipment. We shipped our 140 million therapy for that this year. And I have about, yeah, we have, I have about 350 really passionate, really hardworking engineers. We all have a day job. We work on what we think are critical issues to help the quality of life for a lot of people, mostly in the developed world that can pay for medical care. For the last 15 years or so, about half of that time, we've done well enough that I've been putting an ever larger percentage of our resources over and above what it takes to run that business into projects that most people think are nuts. And uh, I don't have investors, so I'm allowed to do things that are nuts. And I will tell you about a few of those projects now. Actually, one of them falls on the transition between nuts and just a good idea we had to do something. It'll transition out of my day job, medical products, into I'll call it the remaining three, water, power, and first. The transition project I'll tell you about, we were approached by the Department of Defense and DARPA a couple of years ago who came to visit us and said, already 1,600 kids have come back from Iraq missing a complete upper extremity. A couple of billion, a couple of billion, a couple of dozen are bilateral. If you think about losing an arm, Imagine losing both. Losing one then seems like an inconvenience. We were told that what the current state of the art is basically, they put hooks on these kids and they send them through rehab. That's what they did at the end of the Civil War. There's not a big market for this stuff. The big medical companies don't do this stuff. I went home after listening to these guys and I couldn't sleep thinking about bilateral. So I put a bunch of people together and I wish I could tell you more about it and I'm really frustrated that I can't turn and show you a two minute video. You can go to websites and see this. But in one year, we built a 14 degree of freedom, fully articulated arm. Weighs 8.9 pounds, the same weight as the original equipment. 32 inches long, would fit on a 50th percentile female frame. We put it on some of these guys. We have various methods of interfacing the control. The neural stuff is pretty amazing. And the bottom line is, within the next six months after that, we had people that could pick up a glass, rotate at the wrist, the elbow, the shoulder, and drink from it. A few months ago, A few months ago, we had a kid that came in that was getting out of a troop transport, transradial on one arm, transhumeral on the other. Put it on him. Within a couple of days, he and a couple of guys were sitting up in New Hampshire. One, who hadn't fed himself in many years, was there with his wife doing something I can't do. He was eating cereal with milk, with a spoon, and he didn't drop any of the milk. And his wife turned to me and said she hasn't seen him feed himself in years, so I had a choice. They keep the arm or I keep Chuck. So that has re-energized us to work faster, and we hope to put those machines on people for real soon.